Hello and uh, welcome. I'm Christopher Miller, one of the writers and directors of the movie. Hi, I'm Bill Hader. I play Flint Lockwood. And I'm Phil Lord, another writer and director of the movie. This is the Columbia Lady. <laughs> um, super informative. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Why'd you do that to her? It was actually a lot of uh, meetings to be allowed to deface the Columbia Lady with a giant <laughs> yeah. banana. We had president. It happened on Cat Baloo and uh, Mouse That Roared. Oh, you had to like go through them all. Oh yeah, we had to we establish show. precedent. If Howard Stringer sees this, we're all gonna be fired. I like that it's filmed by a lot of people. That was in the screenplay. Who the fuck? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, there were 500 people working on this movie, and it's kind of silly to uh, have like a real film by credit. Yeah. I uh, I will just say this opening. Uh, how many times did I record the opening? <laughs> I, I would say 800. I, we knew yeah. when we wrote it that it, it would like be rewritten, rewritten a hundred times and reanalyzed. And is the is the teacher here played by Liz Kikowski? Yes. It sure is. Liz Kikowski, uh, amazing writer, very good form. Played my wife in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and is my wife's uh, writes scripts with my wife, and has a cool show called the Jeannie Tate Show, and has I think one word off, off screen. <laughs> She's awesome in this film. <laughs> is that Andy? That is Andy Samberg. <laughs> um, who will have um, this line here was another one that we wrote 40 times but you can't run away from your own feet we had uh, yeah I recorded uh, that line uh, in Santa Fe while uh, doing the movie Paul I remember that that's right and the earlier versions were like <laughs> the I, last time the yeah, last was... time yeah that was the last time I did this <laughs> a little sound booth it's in nostalgic Santa Fe. probably very nostalgic and the first one I want to say when was the first recording what was my first session for this? I remember doing one session, long session for this movie, right before the Tropic Thunder premiere, and you could tell in all the pictures from the red carpet that I'm completely out of it, and I fell asleep during the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. It was, it was the most exhausted, uh, I mean, in a good way. <laughs> yes. In a good way. In a good I way, it was super I was exhausted. so Great sleep. entertained that I fell right asleep. No, no, I was so out of it from, because, uh, yeah, you think, oh, I'll do, you know, I'll do a, uh, you know, voice in the anime movie, how awesome that would be, but it is insanely hard work. Anna and I, when she hosted SNL, she was like, isn't it hard work? And I'm like, yeah, it's like one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. This uh, Lauren Graham uh, plays the mom and she oh, was wow. amazing. Yeah, we wanted to get somebody who was really warm, but also had a little smart, sassy side to her. Um, she did a great job. She's great. And the kid is uh, Max Newworth, who was uh, not an actor before this, but was just uh, had a really natural, non actory sounding voice with that little bit of a lisp that was adorable. And that treehouse uh, was supposed to be like the origins of what Flint's, Flint's lab ended up becoming. On all these inventions here. Uh, we had a bunch of others that didn't make the cut, like. Uh, what was there, uh, invisible coffee table that really opens up the space, but you keep hitting your shins on it. Uh, there was the reversible cat that's head and tail switch places. I'm not sure why Steve likes mustaches. <laughs> but that is a running thing. That's a, just a, I think that's a scientific fact about monkeys. monkeys they do like yeah. mustaches. That, that kind potential. of monkey. Atlantic. Called Swallow Falls. Yeah, I did this maybe a hundred times. <laughs> I'm so sorry, over. dude. No, no, not you. That, it was like, that was the learning experience of doing this. I was so naive, like, oh, yeah, you do it once, and then you're done. <laughs> and then you're, you're like, finished. oh, no, animation, you do it over. You do the over. We changed the name ever so slightly. But that was why it was, uh, you know, It's really also good. voiceover like that, especially the beginning of the movie that establishes a lot of stuff. It's something that... The execs know they can change up until the very last minute, <laughs> so nobody signs off on it. Yeah. This shot comes back later in the movie, and that line, originally, he said again at the end of the movie in a very bad joke way, we can just remember that line. This is um, the establishment of Flint's theme, uh, written by Mark Mothersbaugh. Wow. Uh, it's really awesome. Mark did a great job of marrying this kind of big, 
brawny orchestral feel with um, his kind of signature uh, Devo tone. When Flint turns here in a second, yeah, there's like wind blowing on him because the idea was that there's an off-screen fan that he likes to keep by there so that he looks super <laughs> awesome. <laughs> if you listen carefully in the mix, I think it's in the, there. Yeah, the fan turns on and off. Um, this lab was, you know, designed by uh, Justin Thompson, our production designer, and and uh, and. Uh, the color and, and feel of it was colored by Mike Krinsky, our art director, and the whole idea of it was supposed to be like what Flint or we thought was cool when we were kids, which was like Tron and uh, Fantastic Voyage and uh, and Star Wars and all that type of... <laughs> and the Commodore 64. Yes. Which was the most sophisticated computer. And there's a, a pet computer there yeah. also. But he had all this sort of 80s technology and stuff, and it's supposed to look really cool in his fantasy world, but then when the lights come on, and see how homemade it is. <laughs> and like this, this machine, it's made out of a microwave, blender buttons, a, there's a, I think there's a coffee espresso maker on the side. It's like a colander, and that's just a garbage disposal thing. But like the idea is that all of this stuff is super homemade, out of found objects, and the voice of the machine played also by Bill, Bill Hader. Hader. Yeah, that's me. Talented guy. This um, this area has some of the the coolest sound in the movie outside of maybe the inside of the spaghetti tornado. Yeah, you should um, uh, rewind it and listen to it without us talking over it. Turn it up super loud. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Hopefully you've already watched the movie before yeah. you listen to this commentary. This is probably, yeah, you're probably, if you're watching yeah. this for the first time, maybe go back. Yeah. But like uh, Jeff Roubaix was like a sound designer. And, Jeff and uh, his team did an awesome job mm -hmm. on the whole movie. And uh, and how does that work with you guys? Like like you're just saying like the actual machine. Like do, do you just say this is kind of what I want, and then they bring in a bunch of different. Yeah, they're like, does this sound designs? too awesome? They're like, we want to be on an awesome and homemade scale. Right. And this area here is like where we get to see that Flint. Like that was a lab. That hallway was made out of egg cartons and the shower curtain. Um, and it's where we, you know, Flint sort of humming the this Mark Mothersbaugh theme, and we realize it's all sort of been in his head. He's kind of a little kid, and this is yeah. one of my favorite parts. But you do all your own sound effects. And yeah, that was in Santa. Fe. That was the last session I remember. Um, oh yeah, because yeah. we had to play you Mark's score. Yeah, you guys just you did copy. it, and I was like, ooh. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it was James Con. That's right. The man, the Jimmy myth. Con. <laughs> Jimmy Con. He thought he did. We thought he did a great job with. Uh, like he really brought a whole character to this, this piece. I Pretty love him in this. He he came in with a really specific idea. <laughs> <laughs> you don't keep throwing in there where there aren't any fish. He's a very intimidating man. It too. was a really yeah. He was he scared us probably. <laughs> He's worked with most. Howard Hawks. Uh, you know, Francois Coppola, Walter yeah. Hill. I mean, the guys had a story to Right, and yeah. now the pinnacle is <laughs> working uh, with Wes us. Anderson, and now you yes. guys. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a scene coming up way later in the movie where where I did get to work with uh, James Conn over the phone, and that was kind oh, of yeah. a crazy experience. <laughs> yes. uh, like a great kind of like, I can't believe I'm in an argument with <laughs> Sonny Corleone. <laughs> <That's> unbelievable. <laughs> this is and so He's weird. a legend. I know, he's a legend. And he really brought, I think, a, a level of realism to the role that I think was really important for the emotional core of the movie. Oh, yeah. And it was really hard to balance, like trying to make him seem clear that he loved his son but couldn't express it. Like this little scene helps you know that like, He's not just a jerk. He's like he really wants to bond with his son. I love this and <laughs> deliberately crappy animation uh, designed by Justin Thompson. And making the bad mat here on the edge of the mayor. Um, of course, the executives thought it was a mistake, but it took several <laughs> rounds for it to get to be that bad, and they, it was really difficult for them to make it that yeah, bad. Yeah, Sony Imageworks that did all of the the visual effects for this movie, they pride themselves on doing beautiful uh, mats that cannot be seen, so it was very counterintuitive for them. And knock knock, in comes the weirdo. Here's Samberg. <laughs> Andy uh, Sandberg. We <laughs> played are, his character the worst person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we wrote this part specifically for Andy because the 
cocky character that he sometimes plays uh, <laughs> uh, in some stuff that we'd done with him before. We knew exactly how he would do it, and so it was really easy to write for him. We wanted him to be pretty hateable at the beginning and come, you come around to love him. Yeah. And this tackle shop has got all sorts of crazy details in it that, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time making, modeling each of the different props there and all the different lures and everything and having have overhead uh, bad fluorescent lighting and stuff. <laughs> And off he goes. The cell hole is too small. Now this no. was the guy that I freaked out when you guys told me he was in the movie. Bruce Campbell. I was like one of the first things I asked you guys. I was like, yeah. do I get to work with Bruce Campbell? <laughs> yeah. And you were like, no. And I was like, oh, He's man. in Miami. Yeah, man, but yeah. I mean, the Evil Dead movies, oh, Frisco yeah. County, Jun I mean, I mean, if, that, we, that if we were nerds and not busy being popular and hooking up with attractive women all the time, we would also be super famous. Yeah, we'd also yeah. know who Bruce Campbell was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he was great. He has that great... Uh, bombastic and yet somewhat sketchy voice that was perfect for the mayor. We wanted him. We kind of modeled him after the mayor from Jaws. Oh uh, yeah, Murray Murray yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, <laughs> and we wanted him to teach too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, oh uh, my God, Mr. T. Uh, oh uh, man, I, we could make the whole rest of the movie about about Mr. T. Uh, and how awesome he is. He gave us so much good advice about how to live life. It is true. And Did he really give you advice? During all the time, he was talking about how to how to how to be good and how to how to do people right. And you know, did he ever say yeah. stay in school? <laughs> always. He's <laughs> always telling us to stay in school. And you're like, we've been out of school for for yeah. years. Yeah, he was always. You know, he'd always say things like, he always show up early, be like, I'm always on time because the T stands for time. The T always stands for anything. I'll do lots of takes because the T stands for takes. The T stands for everything. It doesn't even have to start with the letter T. Professional reporter. Oh, just send me into her. She's cute. And she's Neil Flynn, uh, the janitor out. from Scrubs, who has two lines in the movie, but he's uh, a super great comedic uh, comedy voice. And this is uh, our intro to Anna. Anna. Who was uh, adorable and amazing. And Yeah, she's so good in this. Yeah, she really is very appealing and so funny and perfect for the part of someone who is much smarter than you would think um, or plays ditzier than she actually is and that's her sort of setting up her relationship with Manny there and this is a great idea this is a great idea weather news network this is uh, Al Roker making uh, his appearance uh, I can't believe he did this because we, when we, we wanted Al Roker to do it, we're like, he's never going to do it. The character's a total jerk the whole time. But he was totally game to be uh, mean and nasty. Playing against type. Thank you, and welcome national television audience. <laughs> These are like some of the first shots we finished. Yeah. Yeah. This shot here, the, uh, <laughs> the effects artist literally went frame by frame and drew a cartoon skeleton <laughs> in on him. That was such an awesome job. surprise. You could totally freeze frame. We go into like to see the shot, and I'm like, "You really gave us the double stitch." <laughs> that was great. Now Andy the, really does that in the SNL yes, offices. He yes. just likes to to rip off his uh, rip off his, his tracksuit <laughs> and reveal it's taken his from hairy real hairy chest. Yeah. That's why we wrote that in there yeah. for yeah. him. We wearing designed, a diaper. We designed that character to be as least appealing as possible, the last person you'd want to be wearing a diaper. And Mr. T, we want to be just shy of being a superhero, uh, because that's how we feel about him. Now, this Sardine Land idea, uh, the idea was sort of taken uh, um, inspiration from uh, uh, Auto World, from Roger and Me in Flint, Michigan where, uh, um, you know, this is a town where sardines are terrible, sardines are ruining the economy, nobody's interested in sardines, and so they decide to spend all their money making a sardine theme park. Um, I thought it would be funny if, the, if it was such an ineffectual town that they needed Flint to save them. This uh, Flint flopping around here like a Muppet was a direction we gave the animators to make him just like he was just a floppy puppet hanging on. 
our sardine to get better. <laughs> that guy that looks like Sonny Bono, who is sort of staring down at him, the animators kept always putting him in all of the shots, because they really liked him for some reason. <laughs> The guy who animated this shot here, like that, for one frame, all the leaves pop off the tree and you would never see it unless There's you... So much detail. The animation team was really incredible on this film. And, and once they realized that every time they put something interesting in the background, we would let them keep it in. It was Everyone open season. trying to outdo each other with more silly stuff. They added so much great stuff. That guy, Joe Town, is played by Will Forte. Um, it's our ninth Saturday Night Live <laughs> cast member yeah. in the film. Uh, star of Clone High and yeah. Oh, yeah, many Clone other High. wonderful things. And uh, the monkey, played by Neil Patrick Harris, when we decided, hey, you know, why not get a super talented guy who can do anything and not <laughs> have him say him, four words? Not have used any of his actual talents. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the rap birds. <laughs> we really wanted to show the nest where the rat birds had taken all the children and the animals, uh, but it seemed a little morbid at the time. That was a mistake. Um, we should have put that There's in. lots of... Yeah, great... you guys should... That, that should be <laughs> your TV special, like when they did like the Ewok like TV oh, specials. Oh, yeah, the Ewok. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Just the land of the yeah, rat birds? The land of the rat birds, or a rat bird nest. <laughs> it's a very old... special rat bird Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's lots of debate on how to break the glass. Uh, it was going to be a, the, a fish skeleton, Yeah, right? the rapper was going to drop the fish skeleton on top of the bowl and have it all crack. And uh, this, this is an awesome looking shot. I can say Image that because I had nothing to do with how, why it looks so awesome. Imageworks yeah. is really great at water, which they sort of perfected uh, on Surf's Up. Yeah. Uh, that looks so good. Uh, we really wanted the, the, this scene I, especially to have really muted tones so that when the I remember this was one of the in. first scenes that I uh, recorded and I remember you guys saying I was, did a scream take and you said no it's more like a scream like uh, like when you get like a like a heel in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some great direction. Yeah. Right? You know. <laughs> Yeah, like that oh thing right there. Oh like, it was, he was like, no, no, it's kind of more like, you know, like when you get a heel in your eye. <laughs> no, like, you imagine no, you imagine had huge you, bulbous eyes. Imagine you have huge bulbous eyes and you're, you know how your monkey friend's hanging out with you. <laughs> yeah, we, we really have to paint the picture, you know? No, it was... It was funny because you guys, it was, you know, you guys would try to explain stuff, you know, and you could read it, but then you guys go, okay, so basically what's happening is, you know, oh, that was the preface the thing. Thing. picture uh, it, if you picture will, you're this, inside if you will. a giant spaghetti tornado. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, well, they're shiny. I'm Sam. Oh. Steve! <gasps> is that a monkey thought translator? Eve! See, we thought that Neil would be the only guy who would, that we could think of who would be able to take one word and make it funny. Yeah, he's a genius. You kicked me in the face. I said I was sorry. Oh. He's a world-class magician. Like a world-class on the board at the Magic Castle. Fun no, fact, Patrick no Yeah. yeah. And so the idea of this scene was, you know, in a lot of these movies, like the disaster movies, like Jurassic Park, they really like to tease out the reveal of the big, uh, big event. You know, like everyone sees the dinosaurs that, and they they gasp right there. That there makes me laugh so much. They take off their Taking glasses. Off, off my actual walk. <laughs> that's yeah. that's based on Bill the way Bill I walks. Actually walk. So this uh, uh, came from a, a suggestion that came out of the, the story department to make uh, to tease out the arrival of the food weather a little bit more, and so we like all things we take it over the top and try to tease it out as long as we possibly could <laughs> and as sarcastically he take he took his own his own beard off beard yes off. he did take yeah. his beard off and i wish that that had been the rat bird holding the sardine who also would gasp and i actually did this i actually did a huge gasp thanks guys we made you do five super yeah, long five, gasps like super long gasps but i almost <laughs> passed out but look, it's still going. Yeah, but I actually did this. It <laughs> yeah, wasn't like yeah, anything no stuff, like you couldn't like get splice them together. No. Or you splice them together to make one long gasp. I was it's like, really you. And I think yeah, it's yeah. a tiny bit in under the big wide shot. 
of the, <laughs> those clouds. Now these uh, burgers that break apart was a huge software uh, development thing to have them break apart and have the buns react like buns and the lettuce flop like lettuce and not have it bounce uh, like like chew toys that just sort of stay this together. This was a great day because uh, this was, uh, it was the day that me and Anna worked together um, oh, yes, and the, we showed up and there was just in and out burgers. I think they might have Animal actually been style. Burger King burgers. Uh, no, they were uh, no, I'm pretty no. sure Burger King who was our, our, our corporate uh, partner, Burger King. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Yes. Burger but they were Whoppers. delicious burgers. But yeah, they you did the whole scene with your. <laughs> of course. Animal style Whoppers. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, you guys did that scene with your mouth full and kept making you do many takes with it. Yeah, thing. and then we ran out of uh, burgers and uh, and then we switched to bananas. <laughs> yes. Nice. Aye, aye, aye. Well, it's probably it's a good the chaser. Best. Yeah. I think. It was a good chaser. Yeah. There's nothing like after you have a bunch. No, we didn't actually refreshing eat banana all the burgers though. Right. Yeah, big nice. Yeah, a big spit bucket. Spittoon. <laughs> yeah, spittoon that you would. That <laughs> meteor shower joke probably the worst pun in the movie. Uh, but hopefully it was and, clear and that we know that also it was bad. the best. And also I the best. have that T-shirt. Or didn't all you guys have the T-shirts? The uh, science, science is, is awesome, awesome T-shirt. Yes. I and I wear it a lot. And uh, and people say science is awesome. That's I have people come up and say that they go, man, you know what? Science is awesome. You're you're teaching people. That's good. This is one shot that we learned uh, looks really awesome in 3D when you go low angles like this. You get a lot of good sense of the depth in the in the, in the scene, and it really feels cool. And we're trying so to imagine set up that how awesome this would be <laughs> in 3D. Yes. No. One of the great no. things about the uh, the Tim design was like one of the one of our great inspirations for all the designs was was the Muppets who work super well in 3D. And there's a lot of Muppets where you can't see their eyes at all, like the Swedish Chef and uh, Bunsen Honeydew, and we thought it would be perfect for a character who is sort of emotionally inexpressive. I remember doing yeah. this a bunch, too. Yeah. This was fun. <laughs> this, this is that. always ask me what was the hardest thing to do, and was doing this line really fast. I oh, think yeah. it might have been the hardest thing to make sure all the words... You can kind of understand them. <laughs> <laughs> this little scene here was a great example of where we let an uh, animator, the idea was like, okay, have him not be able to put his eyes together and then just go to town and try and make us laugh. Make us laugh, funny boy! And then uh, and it, they did an amazing job. This is where the magic happened. Super poop joke number joke. one. Yeah. Um, oh, we did this. Uh, yes. Our faces smushed together. Yes, and you know we ended up cutting most of it for uh, pace, but it's on the deleted scenes because it's so awesome. The bit that you guys did together and oh, yeah, animated yeah, yeah. by Pete Nash. Uh, great job on it. Now, the color in the the lab sort of changes based on the mood that he's in. Mike Krinsky, our art director, uh, really yeah, he felt strongly that we should switch it up every time we're in there. So this has this Purplish, kind of warm pink -ish. light that represents sort of Sam coming in and bringing warming up the environment. Yeah, this is another bit that you guys did together and played off of each other. Here are your little laughs. Right, right. That's why I, I did that on, on right, purpose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It always cracks me up, that, <laughs> that little okay. Um, and this is all bogus science that, you know, every scene in Armageddon has to explain what the rules of the machine are. Pizza? Yes. Mashed potatoes? Yes. She was funny. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did this yes. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was in the room together. Yeah. It's so much it better. Really I wish sweet. I could do the whole movie that Anna, way. Anna just remember was really making me laugh in this because she, I mean, this animation is exactly the way she did it. Like, she was so, like, she got really excited. It was very sweet. I'm really allergic to peanuts. Yeah, me too. So what's it called? Peanut allergy. No, the machine. Of course. So, of course, we had to set up the peanut allergy. And uh, this idea was... This machine had this terrible name for all the time, and they were always trying to get us to call it the Foodster. But we were like, no, it's got to be called the Foodster. <laughs> and this was your this joke that you joke. added, and it was super funny, and always gets a good laugh. Oh. I, I don't know. 
remember that. That's yeah. you, yeah, you, like, you're improvising, like, I think, during the session. You're like, what if we do this? And you're like, ah, that's so much better than what <laughs> oh, we have. Oh, thanks. This was, uh, yes. our choice to, we tried to think of, what would be the what's the worst lamest? thing you could do to the great song, Fight the Power by Public Enemy. <laughs> and have a kitty in ducklings with oversized sunglasses, uh, singing it. <laughs> so... I can't believe I've been watching this for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange joke. Three-hour clip. <laughs> yeah. It's, a very, it's, it's mesmerizing. And this is us very not uh, elegantly setting up uh, that Steve likes gummy bears. <laughs> That's not going to come back, you guys. No. Yeah. Don't worry. It's gold. Yeah. It's called the setup for all you Sid Field fans. <laughs> He's doing the other commentary, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. This yes. is the hero's journey as Joseph Campbell had laid it out. This is another good uh, for bor for for boring for boring. It's for boring. It's for boring. <laughs> the dangerometer, which I now wish we had just called the dangerometer, is in in clear Rastafarian color coded. For easy, easy understanding of when it gets dangerous. Bacon. This shot was really <laughs> difficult to do, making the crazy bacon. Bacon. That those were yeah. funny when you guys would say, "All right, now say <laughs> this three times in that voice," and I go, "Bacon, <laughs> yeah. bacon, bacon." That's a shot from the book. Ah. There's actually a bunch of little quotes from the book in here. This is like one. That's one. This is not one, uh, but that is another one, and uh, I'll touch them. We're trying to set up that the mayor <laughs> is Bruce going Campbell to get Bruce really good gobbling like for, bacon noises <laughs> for future reference for anybody who needs, anyone a, needs to cast a bacon for gobbler. That. He's your man. He's very good. This was trying to explain to the audience that it was going to be, hang on, we're, get, we're going somewhere, you guys. Hang on for the ride. Every day for the foreseeable future, and in 30 days, we hold a grand reopening of the island as a must-see... These drawings of these cars were drawn by Justin Thompson. Every that was supposed to be crude and yet kind of cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good description of the entire movie. Yeah. And this Leslie Gore hit Sunshine Lollipops. Yeah, uh, which uh, was famously used in a great Simpsons episode. Well, great. Well, that's just great. Yeah. Um, the town of Swallow Falls was sort of modeled after Flint, Michigan, and Astoria, Oregon, my mom's hometown, uh, and like all these uh, towns that were really supposed to be, you know, uh, have on hard times, but uh, trying to resurrect themselves. I mean, we're not shy from putting lots of uh, telephone poles and air conditioning ducts and all the stuff that they try to take out of most animated movies. <laughs> That out of cider thing is like a twist on the on the cleanup thing in the book also. Just ham and your name engraved on a banana is what that one storefront said. 3D you guys! Game calling account of pie was one of the things I remembered most vividly from the book as a kid. A pizza stuffed inside turkey. <laughs> I love yes. this Pete Nash animated the flint side of this and He's our animation director. He insisted on Flint being completely still in that one shot, just blinking. I remember coming to Sony and uh, getting to, you guys were like, hey, you want to meet the animators? And I was like, sure. And it was just this giant room of people working insanely hard and they just <laughs> had to listen to my voice all day and you could tell by the look on their face and i was like hi i'm bill they're like, like ah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird they've been like listening to your disembodied voice forever like, hi. but they did and they're the they should have their own commentary track <laughs> <laughs> they do it's track five yeah they um they were actually so excited that you came, that were they were unbelievably touched that you came to that, oh, room that day. They talked about it for weeks. <laughs> they don't get visited in there, in the cave. Oh man, yeah, it was. It was like a cave, yeah, because they have to be able to see yeah. this stuff. So it's really dark in the room. I really like the uh, the lighting in this scene as sort of a magic hour dusk time. 
My Steve Terrence really awesome Malick look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're always mean to me. <laughs> I remember that. You got. I did this a couple of times, and then you're like, "Oh wait, what's wrong with this?" Oh yeah, Bill, you gotta yell. He's like really far away. <laughs> you're 100 <laughs> yards away. <laughs> you gotta yell out. That's a big part of our job is knowing what distance characters are from one another. Yeah. This yeah. line always cracks me up. You know how fathers always trying to express their love and appreciation for their sons. How arch it is. Earl, wait! <laughs> this is what we call plot point two. Yes, if you remind it. Yeah, yes. oh, here it is, look. Yeah, if you're following along with in your, your color journey, code of journey your journal. With your copy your of journal. screenplay by Sid Field, you'll know that this is. Got an idea. Here we go. What, what What's the sound of the rap birds? That's me. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's um, Chris combined, with right, some, with some weird, like, like pterodactyl thing. We got um, a real pterodactyl. Now this... Bobby J. Thompson yeah. uh, is Cal and uh, is... Um, we will all hilarious. be working for him someday. Yes. For sure. He's the king of showbiz. He is the king of showbiz. I worked with him on Human Giant. He was really great. This was the very first thing, like, when you guys were at, you know, I went to this room in Sony in New York uh, when I got the call of possibly doing this, and they showed me a reel, and it was this whole sequence in storyboards. Oh, yeah. With, um... I think you guys just doing all the voices, yeah. right? It's yeah, probably. Yeah, yes. this whole thing. Cody just... Cameron, our storyboard artist, was it was Earl. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, but it was in the like these drawings of the characters, and I, uh, I, I, I was like, I'm in. It was that, <laughs> and then a, a shot of uh, Sam Sparks walking on Jello. Oh yeah, an early and, test of that. And, <laughs> and, then, and, like, then, and, and I was like, I'm in. What <laughs> faith you have yes. to have in that, you know, yeah. like. Well, that's the thing. That's how you get into the, you know, you get a call and they say, do you yes. remember the book, Clyde and the Chance of Meatball? And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. And they go, they're making it a movie. Do you want to be in it? And you're like, yeah. And then it was in that meeting where I was like, do you guys remember that when I was talking to you? Oh, and, yeah, we were like over the phone. And, and you were like, like so this conference call. am I going to be the... And I'm the lead guy. You're the lead guy. <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, I didn't yeah, realize yeah. you want me to be the lead. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you're the lead because you... Uh, yeah. That was and weird. that right there is that was the first publicity still from the movie. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that just was like in all. every single magazine. <laughs> and uh, um, this and, bit yeah, where it was um, a, just a poop reaction. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but <laughs> I, I, I it, one of my favorite things about this movie is Bill's performance in it. It's like, oh. I, I, it's like warm and funny and and really human oh. and it's kind of everything Sincere we wanted. And yeah. Hilarious. We, we cast Bill uh, off of. An, an interview that he did for the EPK uh, for Superbad. Oh, that's perfect, what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, we like showed like, that. Wow, his natural voice is like um, uh, the geeky guy that we totally weren't because we were super popular and stuff. <laughs> right, um, <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, yeah. But that shot in the um, in the house is a, a great example of how they used this awesome handheld camera technology to make it actually feel like it was shot documentary style where they had uh, the scene in what do you call oh, it? Wait, my favorite oh. favorite joke of the whole movie coming, coming right up here it comes favorite joke of the whole movie right there it was <laughs> it's the, the, the yeah. English yeah. refused to say any French words yes. yeah. the uh, yeah this next thing coming up is uh I see was added very, very late in production. It almost couldn't be completed. That was Steve with a wig on, in case you missed it. <laughs> a Sam wig. Maybe a little bit creepy. Um, Here he goes again. Same one. Hi, Sam. How are you? That's nice. I was wondering if you would like to go on a date. This shot was animated by David Stadolny. Um... Okay. Great, bye. Meet me in the forest. <laughs> He's not good with girls, you guys. No, he doesn't yeah. know. That was something that I, I knew nothing about. Sid <laughs> Field <laughs> moment <laughs> number three. Yeah. Yes. The, the dial turned to yellow, and that's that was one of the first of many TV callbacks. Oh, nowhere. I just thought it'd be nice. So this is a, a signature picture from the book that uh, 
we wanted to realize in, in 3D. It was always a big part of the pitch, even uh, six years ago when we started. I think this is almost a direct quote. And uh, um, it was our editor, Bob Fisher, whose idea was to go inside. And we had this whole scene with him talking to each other, having like a romantic scene, but um, outside. And he's like, why don't you go in there, man? And we're like, of course. That was uh, a, probably a $10 million yeah. suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> that little yeah. hand talking thing was a total animator pitch that was not something that we were expecting. This, and this is the just... very, very, very first thing that I saw animated with our voices. Maybe you show it to yeah. me and, and on a... Oh, yeah, that's like right. On a laptop. On a laptop. And, yeah. like, you, got, you guys had it on a laptop <laughs> and showed it to me and Anna, and we were like, whoa. Yeah, this set in here is... The way Imageworks claims the most complicated set they've ever had to build because um, it warbles and the light reflects and reflects and bounces off of itself and um, they're using this ray tracer software called Arnold that calculates how the light bounces off of everything and so it almost blew up all their servers. Is it yellow exit sign? <laughs> the natural Water. thing you would put in. Yeah, that's yeah, just, it makes that's sense. code. You know, you have to do that. Like that stuff. Yeah. Like you jump up and you go between two pillars. <laughs> what would that sound like? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh yeah. Jeff Roubaix did an amazing job, and the awesome and job. the mixers, uh, Greg Russell and Michael Semanic were amazing at That's... creating this whole a Jello universe. <laughs> I, we get so many comments from people who are, are like, How did she concerned. Get out? Yeah, that she drowned in the Jello. Really? Yeah. yeah, she was lodged in there. How did she get out? That would have been the craziest move. Of and then all time now, if you now she's that, dead. Like, huh? I guess yeah. You know, Sam's got to drown. It, it was a draft was... like that. Yeah, it was very different. <laughs> it took a very dark turn. Very different. Um, I really like the two of you guys in this scene. I think it's really we did. Did we do this together? Really yes, lovely. we did. We did this scene together. Yeah. Can you keep a secret? No. <laughs> That's one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> I always get to laugh. Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, it was a really long time ago, but I... Rob Greenberg uh, helped us uh, with the script um, for a while, and this joke here, too, that was his joke, and it always makes me think of him every time I, I hear it. He's a nice two? man. Wait a minute, I'm a nerd? I was totally obsessed with the science of weather. I would know what it feels like to be nerdy like that, though. Um, Sam's room is actually Cal's bedroom also, but with different wallpaper. <laughs> a lot of little cheats like that. That song? That's a great song. Miller and Lord, Ask Cat Original Genesis. composition. Yep. You guys <laughs> Yes. major... Major bucket. Major cash. Major cash -ish. Oh, man. These glasses are actually... Considerably smaller, smaller than the first draft. The actual glasses are... Enormous to fit on her giant <laughs> round bed. <laughs> yes. I love that joke. Nothing. Wait. Yeah, this is, uh, you just think that, that Flint can do anything. Right. He shows you up once more by making a jello scrunchie. <laughs> <laughs> That's also the kind of direction you're like, okay, now eat a bunch of jello really fast. Yeah. <laughs> it also think, make, makes me think of that must be how he built the entire You can see all the spoons. Yeah. The spoons yeah. on the right that are still lodged in uh, from his, him oh, eating wow. away. Oh, yeah. This is He's finally like, the chance to explain yeah. that. This was like a half-finished <laughs> room. You can't really tell. There used to be a line where he's like, I'm sorry, I didn't finish up here. Um, the color in this uh, scene is absurd uh, yeah. and awesome. Yeah, thanks to our Cracker Jack lighting team that really made this uh, look beautiful. Um, obviously, Flint has never kissed a girl before, or been in a snowball fight before, or done anything that humans do. Uh, so he gets everything wrong. Oh. Yeah, here's the dorkiest cell phone ring in the world. I got to sing this. They gave this out, Flint, you have a call, as a cell phone ring to the crew, and a lot of them still have it on their, oh, uh, really? on their cell phones. Oh, really? <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> this is another scene that you guys did together. You just kept it all talking over each other. 
<laughs> this bib store. Oh, I love this bibs model. Duh. After the Abercrombie and Fitch at the Third Street Promenade, <laughs> downtown Santa Monica. Um, and so in the book, there's the roofless restaurant scene, and we want to sort of envision oh, it. I have as to like point cool out uh, the Groucho kid. Marx kid here in the lower right. That's a kid with Groucho Marx glasses. Like in the book, there's a kid with uh, Groucho Marx glasses yeah, in yeah. the roofless restaurant because Ron Barrett uh, made a joke to himself. That's the illustrator of the original book. That's Will Forte again. Oh, Will Forte is the guy <laughs> with the fake beard. He's an insane person. Yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> is that, the idea was that like any time uh, someone from the town had something to say, it would always be Forte. He was the voice of the crowd. But the name of the character is Joe Town with an E. Forte is Making a genius. Yeah, I know. Making these steaks look appealing and having them glisten in the way that steaks do turned out to be very, very difficult uh, to get them to look tasty. And all of the modeling of the, the food was, was a real challenge, but they did a great job on it. Ooh, I remember doing this a lot. Too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did this a lot. This is a and crazy shot. there's another shot scene in coming up that I did a lot of, too, and, uh, and later in the movie they'll point out. I, just, <laughs> no, I don't mean that in any way. Like, I was annoyed. I just remember, oh, I, can re oh, yeah. I could recite this. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably, like, three minutely different versions. Every steak is not exactly the same size. But it was good kind of doing it again because you would, it was it taught me a lot because I would go, oh, yeah, no, we got that, right? And then you would hear it and go, yeah, we got it. And then we would do it again and go, oh, no, actually, it's better. We, you know. Oh, that's oh, yeah. that's good. That you is know? a great relief to me. No, no it was. <laughs> Trended upward. Him. Now I'm all Stanley Kubrick about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like 80 takes. I know takes we've ruined everything. your relationship with every future director. Yeah. Well. That light on his face is good. Oh yeah, this all uplit, so it's kind of scary because all the tables have their own lighting, but we wanted it to be kind of like the the cheesiest pseudo-hip L.A. or New York restaurant ever. Yeah. Where the chairs are uncomfortable and it's all modern. Like a Philippe Stark, uh, Ian Schrager looking place. A place where our team would feel out of place. But more <laughs> happy grinding chum. Yeah, I well, love this, like, it's pitch perfect for me. It's like, it, it works on an emotional level, but it's also, like, incredibly tongue-in-cheek when right. you really think about it. And the flickering of the fluorescent lights is really, Please. really fun. And this scream of yours really cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't write that, folks. <laughs> I'm to... saying this is these are big hot dogs. That's, so that's, a, now that is a, that's a clever line. We wrote going, like 20 lines. I remember for that. going, these are big hot dogs. Like, these hot dogs are big. <laughs> these are big hot dogs. Yeah, you do it like yeah. so always. Funny. How many different ways? Is it Steve? Yellow. Right, Steve. I really love the idea that uh, Flint always thinks that Steve is smarter than he is. He misinterprets everything. He's <laughs> right, being Steve. really clever. Yeah, the... Oh, oh man. man. There he comes. Whoa. I remember doing that a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This was the scene where we really went hog wild with a 3D effect. This was the <laughs> sequence that was in editorial at the moment when we learned the movie was in 3D. That uh, we had got the call that they were going to spend the money and do it. And it was wow. like, hot dog in your face shot. Um, everything was, was coming right at you. They're like, okay. Now we these, really this, this is kind of weird, these look like whip pans, but they are they actually exist in real space. Yeah, they did this in real space, which just comes out as a blur, but it's kind of fun to know that we really moved the camera around the set this way. Mutate. I think that's why the food is getting bigger. Here's what I heard. Blah, 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 sign, 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 bigger. He's like, <laughs> jacket rips there. Everyone's gonna love these new ports and sides. Oh, this scene when you just move the camera around, does that mean you... It, what does that mean? There's an imaginary camera on our imaginary set, and you could have just kind of built those as like, just do a random a blurry thing. Yeah, uh -huh. You could have cheated all those jumps oh, to different locations. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see. But, but you guys choreographed it. it. <laughs> yeah. Pointlessly, I might add. Believe it or not, it's very analogous <laughs> to like a regular live-action movie where they build the, the set with like 
uh, like this is forty feet by forty five feet, mm -hmm. and the character is like Flint is like five eight. <laughs> they actually have. It's like we need to know the doors are this high, and so, um, and so then when they put the camera in, it's it's all analogous. So we pick the the lens that you would use, and and um, it's just like a regular regular movie, except for the cranes are really cheap, and the dollies are really I cheap. really like, <laughs> I really like this performance. <laughs> Oh yeah, Bruce. Um, you know when you tell him to literally chew the scenery, he'll go for it. That's how to why do I it. love that guy. He's so great. <laughs> I mean, so great. I watch the Evil Dead films at least all three <laughs> at least twice a year since 1990. <laughs> do you watch awesome. them in really? Do you watch them in a row? Yeah. That's awesome. Even, I, I saw Army of Darkness nine times in the theater, and it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma for a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the greatest. Wow. I was 15, and I would leave school, and I would go watch Army of Darkness with uh, my friends. That is so awesome. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I, was, I love that movie. You still haven't met him, right? You're going to meet no. him in three days? Meet him at the premiere. Yeah. You'll see me. Uh, it'll be like the Beatles. <laughs> I'll just be like, I'll be just crying. Screaming. It's like yeah. you are I seeing Robert Pattinson woman. for the first time and you yeah. are a 14 year old girl. He could, uh, yeah, Robert Pattinson could come up to me and I would push him out of the way <laughs> and start kissing Bruce Rose Campbell's Campbell. feet. I read his book. I own his book in hardcover. If that, chins could kill. That is awesome. <laughs> More Robert Pattinson for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There was a lot of work, uh, Our design copyright. work. 1980. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like went into this design of the old. It's Doppler. old computers and avionics. It'd be and funny if you guys really went 100 percent with that because it would take it'd be five minutes of her just waiting for it to load up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback, Sid Field fans. Yeah. The Nacho Cheese Hot Springs. Uh, Oh yeah, extra gross. Wait, what is this from? This music. This, this is, is the um, this is the Alan Parsons project. I believe Sirius. This, yep, it's called Sirius. Uh, they use it in the Chicago Bulls uh, when they may come. May recognize you know it from that. It's in the. You know what? It's uh, you see the movie Safe Men. John yes. Yeah. yeah. I yes. think they have it in a in a bar mitzvah scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so a, lot a, think, a lot of people think that Flint looks like Adrian Brody or Jason Schwartzman in the scene with his hair. Oh like yeah, this. he does look like Adrian Brody a little bit. I just love that. <laughs> the uh, tuxedo T-shirt is uh, my favorite part about this, and that yeah. comes from the fact we really wanted to dress up, but having him, uh, to afford a whole new outfit was going to be really, really pricey and not worth it. We we're going to have to lose some awesome effects. We're like, okay, we'll just change his t-shirt to a tuxedo t-shirt. He, looks, he looks, looks pretty hip right there. Yeah, he yeah, does. He looks really <laughs> hip. He looks really cool. He's got a great haircut. Yeah. There's lots of details like that woman holding uh, two giant sushis like pom-poms in the background. And this is uh, <laughs> Sandberg's low point. As Will Forte pulling giant scissors away from Andy Sandberg. It's funny. And Andy just throwing a tantrum. He's like semi drunk here. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that that's him and Will. It's really funny. Put your clothes back on. We don't need that. Come on. And this woman here is whispering, I love you. <laughs> And you can see the mayor escaping to the right there. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the Bellagio-style cheese fountains oh, were yeah. surprisingly hard to get to look awesome. And there's poor Tim grinding away. The lighting's away. so good on that. Oh, man. We had such an incredible team. Uh, Rob Riedow is our uh, visual effects supervisor for the film, and he put together just an unbelievable team. We got a, a lot of production value in this movie that we... <laughs> We had a Wouldn't have huge otherwise got. debate oh, cool. as to whether or not Flint should actually cut the scissors, uh, so I mean, cut the ribbon or not, and whether that meant he had gone too far. <laughs> um, I know. I it was like, like our biggest fight today. on the movie. Uh, this, is, this is a, this was a big. Uh, uh, yeah. When I see it, that was remember that was a big uh, that was a big line. Ma uh, Mama Mia, that yeah. one. <laughs> yes, the uh, the 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember <laughs> doing that and you guys laughing really hard at the end of everything. <laughs> the, you're, uh, like, you're like, I guess these guys oh love boy. this joke. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. That's better than Chef Boy, Are We in Trouble? <laughs> yeah. Chef Boy. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> yes. I did this with the picture, remember? Yes. Oh, yeah. I yes. did a mock up of this Luke. and I was like, well, we'll watch what we Hello, well, The, um,. Making this spaghetti tornado had like 75 different elements to it, like shooting out the different meatballs, the like spray of tomato sauce. Not to yeah. mention the that uh, Zach's like like animation, right? Oh that yeah, Zach's Zach shot. Zach did that. Yeah, just that, like that guy in the tub and the guy knocking on the door were in the book, in the tornado in the book. And this is all based on the Jack shoe board here, and animated <laughs> by Matt Munn, right? Yep. Super, very Great. talented man. Now the boats are backing up. A little hard to tell what's going on there. There's Sonny Bono again. He's in like every scene. That the spaghetti looks great. I know, yeah. they did a great job. Amazing, amazing job. That's a great camera work here. Whoa. Yeah, that was one of my favorite shots. Where it, go, it goes like through the wall really fast. But you don't even, you can't even tell. We love a good storm over here. <laughs> This, I love Roker here because he's being like the most friendly version of a jerk. Yeah. And this is sort of our uh, letting you know that eating too much uh, junk food and excessive consumption is not really the world's best yeah. idea. <laughs> oh, no. well, I'll get right back to that storm and hopefully Sam will look a little more appealing. There's actually more to that spaghetti twister that you can see in the deleted scene where... Yeah, I recommend you s stop the movie, go back and watch that version. And including and the food fight here also, and then we'll wait for you guys and you yeah. can come back. It All makes right. way more sense. And and we're back. Okay, did you like it? Was it awesome? Was it as awesome as we said? Did you notice that in the... <laughs> that time when that thing happened? When the tortilla chips had uh, were hanging by fishing line? Um, <laughs> that comment is going to make no sense for the one person, person who actually did, you did said. pause it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the most obedient person in the world. There was a lot of bad puns there with the shrimp where he was going like, the chokes on you, shrimp. <laughs> this is yes. the one another great sound design moment. The crazy explosion. Definitely wanted you to uh, feel that. It that's was when over. you can tell that the guy who mixed the Transformers movies mixed this film. Wow. That was the only way to communicate with the machine. It's funny to think that you and Bruce Campbell still haven't met. I know. I, we've never <laughs> met, and uh, that will all we be have over. Scenes, yeah. Very soon at the premiere. Uh, this is Bill all. Yes, yeah, so Jason like, George, our dialogue editor, cut this thing mashed together. up. Yeah. Oh, is this me? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all, all me. Oh wow, yeah, that's, that's the scariest uh, reading uh, of strawberry I've heard in my whole life. Strawberry. Strawberry. Oh, uh, the clouds that they had to develop uh, a way to make the clouds yeah, royal the, like clouds, but stay in the shape of food. Look at the, the water part. look from it. I mean, really, yeah, I know, really, they, really good job. This is a very serious part of the movie. Yeah. Anyone? I am a doctor. <laughs> well, Manny is like Man. marginalized. <laughs> like not even the cameraman Benjamin, cares Benjamin about him. Bratt. Benjamin Bratt was the, the, amazing. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the one heartthrob in the entire <laughs> cast. <Right. laughs> so no, many uh, ladies man showed up. Freakish head. So many ladies showed up on the days that he was yeah. recording. He was hilarious and was pitching all yeah. sorts of uh, ad lib stuff and and had really great comic timing. He was totally a great surprise, I thought, and and really understood the joke and 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 kind of figured out that the smaller he played it, the funnier it was. And the more like he was really understated but super awesome, yeah. the better it was. That gross out uh, kiss barf is uh, <laughs> is one of the classier <laughs> moments in the film, and it's followed up by an amuse bouche reference. So you really don't know what <laughs> it's the hell high and low in the same place. That's the whole point, right? Otters, Otters get, get wet. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to be in the epicenter 
of a perfect food store. Um, a lot of Sam's dialogue actually does make sense. Like when she's talking about Jello and how it's a viscoelastic biopolymer. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it's the and only incorrect science in the whole the movie. The Coriolis acceleration and all that stuff was all stuff that we looked uh, up. These people have never accurate. moved. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they just stayed in the same place the whole time. Uh, They're just stunned by the phenomenon. That looks so good. That giant meatball. Making meat look good was really hard. Oh, yeah. It's a lot easier to make like a waxy candy corn look believable. You see how expressive Although probably whoever get. worked on that is like, nope, it wasn't easy no, at all. Yeah, these are over. Oh, I remember seeing this uh, this shot uh, animated. It was one of the other shots. Uh, yeah, this is shots another... I saw animated. The, the lighting design here is so beautiful. Yes, there's yeah. these... Uh, particles of dust in the light uh, that this guy Carl Herbst developed. We call them Herbst particles that took that actually were in 3D space, so the 3D version could feel it, could feel the dust in the air. This uh, um, we had a little screening of the movie um, a while ago, um, maybe like what, like six months before the movie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this scene was animated, and uh, uh, it made my wife cry. Oh, wow. oh, really? Like, and then my wife got very sad. I mean, you are. I think, <laughs> I think, she got, I think you're she, awesome in this. She yeah. was like, oh, honey. I know this. <laughs> you are, I just feel like this shows off a, a lot of range for you. It's yeah. really, you did a really, really nice job with this scene. It's oh, very yeah. sweet and sincere. Yeah, that's like, what I like about your performance in this, is that in, the, in the film, is that it's got all of the like really um, big, broad comedy moments, and then these like really human, warm, small moments in it. I don't know if it was my acting as much as just the image of me in a trash can. I think just made her sad. <laughs> <laughs> just made her bummed out. It's, it is stacking the deck a little bit. Yeah. And then just like Mama did, we're trying to recreate the same shots that we did in the bedroom with the mom there. And you can see how like little tiny movements like that with Tim, even though you can't see his eyes, are really expressive. Yeah. This is an. Do what you gotta do. That's right. Awesome reprise of the theme by yeah. Mark and his team. <laughs> Running down an egg carton hallway. Yeah, we want to say make them run as dorky as possible, <laughs> and then they get like no dorkier. Uh -huh. And they, oh, yeah. here comes my favorite shot in the movie. The one right this there. One, here, he's like yeah. dangling. He's dangling like a muppet. That was the animator's choice. That was so smart. My car too. Now with wings. <laughs> now with wings. wings has he clearly has no yeah. regard for how destructive <laughs> that vehicle is. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. So, cool. Oh yeah. So a lot of these shots are in the book too. The donuts. <laughs> the macaroni guy is in the book. Uh, and the Pentagon oh, yeah, signature yeah. moment here. It's got a big, uh, big laugh in the trailer. I remember. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's a very kid-friendly joke. I love this uh, joke because it just reminds me of what was in the script. In the script, it said, "A man steals, steals a, TV, a TV. Period. A TV steals a man." Yeah. <laughs> now this scene is all crazy because the food is just conveniently falling where it's not gonna anybody is gonna get hurt ever but the whole scene is is filled with these big he did a great job with it <laughs> he stays on i love TV. watching steve in this sequence too is there's a moment when the stuff we just finished where he literally falls asleep during the exposition <laughs> and then he wakes up yeah now, Earl, <laughs> Another classy joke. Earl wears these shorts because when we first created the character, he was also a gym teacher, a gym coach, uh, and really only a volunteer cop. Uh, and in fact, the, the thing on his hat actually says P.E. coach and not, or phys ed, I think it says. It just confused so many people well, that we like, finally just felt like we had to okay, simplify Okay, we'll just keep him a cop, but we'll keep the short shorts for some reason. Yeah. It just feels right. And I liked his haircut. Oh, yeah, the reverse mohawk. The reverse, reverse mohawk. mohawk. I know, that was a weird, there was like a, a bugaboo we had about giving him a mohawk and everybody wanted it and we said, 
It's too much like the real Mr. T. So we just did the opposite. I guess that means we're contrary. I'm coming with you. You're gonna need someone to know. We do not shy away from 3D effects in this movie. <laughs> no. yeah. Or cartoony sound effects. <laughs> I love that little noise, yeah, when, when he, she presses his, his nose. nose. <laughs> so <laughs> silly. You're a pilot too? Yes. I am also. This running gag where Manny can do anything. No. Um, there was like nine other things that he could do. In the, in so he's not a part of a physicist, but he is a comedian. That is true. That is clear. He knows German. The way the car rocks while he gets up in the whole camera is great. And this is Brent's turnaround. This is where we start to hopefully is, like uh, Brent a little bit. This is his arc. That's yes. right. He's coming along. Uh, the car's pretty full, so... Yeah! Brent! <laughs> there was a whole That's bit a, here. That's a I think. Yes. Brent. <laughs> we had a bit that Seeing we cut out name. there where... where Joe Town was also in the car and he left. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Cut out for pacing. That was right. pretty funny. They were like, if "You guys, this is gonna be a crazy trip. So anybody who's, who's not, not ready, ready, say so now." And then Forte just shows like, oh, just head out. Yeah, yeah, guys. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, that is not good for me. <laughs> that that's is a editor. picture of our editor. Bob we Fisher. hid that from him for a year and did all this stealthy stuff so they wouldn't find out. And then we found out that he already knew about it. And he's, to this day, is protecting the name of whoever, of whoever revealed it to him. Although I'm fairly sure that she's in the booth listening to us right now. Water goes in the top. So the giant meatball was a real challenge. And uh, yeah, that's another classy. It wound up looking great. Yeah. And having this There's smoke. something very Dune like about it. Oh, you mean the <laughs> book and not the movie? Yeah, the good book. way though, right? Yeah, in a great way. <laughs> yes. In a good way. Anybody order pizza? <laughs> we wanted to have a, a dog fight with these pizza slices. This is one of the things that we really, really wanted from the beginning was to like take it one step farther than the book. Like start earlier than the book and go even farther than the book. Uh, and we're like, what? What is it? What is it? How can you take this even farther? And the idea of pizzas shooting their toppings. I mean, can you imagine if we lost this kill code? <laughs> uh oh! That's a complication, right? Yes. Oh, for the Sid Field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh oh. Things were going great. Now, this was based on a conversation I had with my own dad. Uh, where he w I was trying to send me an email and it took 45 minutes before I could get him to copy and paste something into an email <laughs> and we realized that that was perfect for Tim. Yeah, this is this. Uh, yeah. No, it's coming it up later. Coming up a little later, later. yeah. <laughs> I love Andy just flopping around in the back there and then suddenly Manny is an Some legitimate awesome awesomeness here, yeah. Retracts the wings, they pop back out. That was good lighting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we want this intake thing to be awesome. Terrifying. And, and now he explains the, the plan with a very handy map. <laughs> oh, that's a setup up for later, gang. You guessed it. The Western Blowhole. They keep oh, that, saying this, Western was blowhole. A, th this whole thing was something I did a lot. What do I do? Uh, you can be president of the back seat. That's Brent's theme there. <laughs> that is kind of like a demeaning thing Chris and I say to each other if we're having an argument oh, and somebody cares be, more about it. You can be president of that, that idea. You're president of the joke. It's a way of giving in while also making the other person feel bad. The lighting in this is oh, yeah, awesome. crazy. That's really good. And then the eyeballs. <laughs> kind of uh, I don't, can't tell if that's a Pee Wee's Big Adventure yeah, homage. Classic or, uh, uh, like, Warner, yeah, Brothers. Like Warner Brothers thing. I think thing. it's got to be Warner Brothers. Yeah, because I think the Pee Wee's Big Adventure thing was an homage. Common source, yeah. yeah. 
But if we go this way, the fluidimeter should be right down this area. <laughs> Brent, get out of that pie. She awesome. says it's very sweet. Even when she says it, it's very <laughs> I cute. I know, right? This is very cute. She, sweet about she it. can't not sound cute. Yeah, I know. The secret to her success, a lot of her characters do horrible things in movies, but they, she kind of comes off Teflon. Mm -hmm. So a few times we've seen Flint's, I mean, we've seen Tim's eyes, but this is the first time where we get him to lift his eyebrows and his mustache. And it always makes Phil and I laugh, but it makes nobody else laugh. There, his there it mustache is. goes, <laughs> it made me laugh again. Oh yeah, here's your here's the the scene this is you did scene. with Jimmy. Yeah, this yeah. is the scene with. So this is yeah, me and James Con. Sorry, I can say Jimmy when he's not here. This this is me and James Con, uh, you know, uh, on the phone together. Actually, like, actually, actually, on the phone, actually right? on the phone together. Yeah, he was here in LA scene. and you were in New York and we had uh, studios in both places. And I'm pretty sure some of these like huh and those kinds of things from him are. Just legitimate coming from being on the phone yeah. with you. You are actually literally getting frustrated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like that. That, part yeah. was, you going, that was real. <laughs> that was real. Yeah, that was like, no. Nah. <laughs> no, I would never get frustrated, James. <laughs> no, you're kidding. <laughs> you come after he me. He will murder us with his yeah. eyes. No. And the chest hairs a tingling. The, uh, these bread boats are another signature part of the book that we wanted to make sure be a big part of the story. And in comes Billy Zane to push out the old ladies out of the way uh, and get off the Titanic. See you suckers! Woohoo! Au revoir! And bon appetit! <laughs> <laughs> we used to have several cutbacks in the mayor as his boat was getting smaller and smaller and smaller and eating away at it. But for pace, we ended up cutting most of those. And this food lanch. <laughs> I just love that that is like the most cartoony timing it could possibly be, followed by a, like a, a really sophisticated wow. simulation of the food smashing through yeah. buildings. Yeah, that was not easy, as oh, you might imagine. No. And each food sort of has a property of its actual food. This is a <laughs> lot of math at work right there. Wow. And the idea that the family works together and they throw Cal like a football and then she catches him like Terrell Owens in the end zone. And then also a baseball player. <laughs> they're very, they're very athletic families. They're like a super team. That's the, from the gym coach thing. And this scene is like just an homage to how much we love Mr. T and how awesome he is. What an inspiration he is. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> T. That was, That's not our joke, That was right? Mike Lester, That's the storyboard Mike Lester, artist. Storyboard artist. That's his joke. By the way, the, the... Every once in a while he'll call and be like, is the T joke still in? <laughs> it's still there. It lived. Ow, what? I love the lighting of these tunnels. It's all based on like Carlsbad Caverns and uh, Fantastic Voyage. Dad? Dad? Can you hear me? Dad? And then the movie gets extra weird. <laughs> we showed this clip at Comic Con without any setup beforehand, and they just all scratched their heads in confusion. It literally takes 70 minutes of movie to understand it. Okay, so the food is gone, <laughs> yeah. sentient because it's like heighten. genetically engineered. And you gotta heighten. You gotta heighten. You That's can't right. just say one thing. Yes, man eating roast chickens is the natural place he would go in this movie. Oh, area. I remember that because you, you recorded Anna saying they ate Brent and you guys wanted yes. us to say it simultaneously, the same time. so that you one. played it to me. Yes, overhead Oh, phones. I remember doing this a lot. Yep. Oh, yeah, this was a line that changed a lot. It was like the yeah. emotional... Yeah, so they're like big story moments with lots of emotion that don't have lip sync will not be completed until the last possible yeah, second. Last In fact, moment. that might be the very last line that was ever recorded. That was, that was the last thing I ever did <laughs> yeah. for the movie. I remember because I did it two picture and this was fully animated. We were mixing. Yeah, yes. I did it We like were like halfway. Picture. We had two days left in the mix when, you, when we rewrote that. Yeah, I came yes. in and did it. Um, animation on the spastic chicken is really one of my favorite parts. 
I like these oh, guys. Nice. They're like, huh? What's up going on with Larry? <laughs> Oh yeah, Pete animated that. And this is Brent's Triumph, and it's the same theme as the Brent Baby Brent commercial, but at the triumphant version. <laughs> like that is poop joke like two and a half, right? Yeah, it's not really a poop joke. It's sort of lateral to... It's a very classy joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's close to the vest poop joke. And then crotch kick. Now that's a classy joke. <laughs> now he slowly... Caresses <laughs> Flint's face there with his chicken wing. You really did. Go, 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 go! <laughs> See, Brent's redeemed himself from being yeah. such a jerk at the beginning. You love him now. And our. Hey, I think we set yeah, up that funny. there was a peanut allergy earlier. It's funny because I am actually allergic to. to I know. Like, I I very do, uh, dangerously, allergy. right? And yeah, Anna yeah, is not. Good. Yeah, yeah Anna is not. So it's funny that. Uh, at the opposite. Uh, it must have been hard for you to play it. To yeah, play not be allergic. Like, yeah, to be like, relax. <laughs> hey, it's fine. Yeah. Another, he just loves mustaches because it's the most painful thing to eat. This New York set, I believe, is like a modified... <laughs> isn't it a modified version of the Spider-Man set that the Image Works yeah. built? <laughs> That's you, Chris. Oh, yes, that is. I think it's my the, groan. What was the Will Smith zombie movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I Am Legend. I Am Legend. Yep. Yep. And we, in Clone High, we would do mean things to Lincoln, and in this, we did mean things to it's Lincoln. No different. I think we have it out for Abe Lincoln. We're about to be crushed by a giant corn. <laughs> Whose voice is that? That is uh, Melissa. Melissa Sturm from Marketing. Mm -hmm. All right, Melissa. She has a couple of roles in this film. She did the scratch yes. voice for Sam uh, all the way through the film. And is a very talented actress. Yeah, take that, Roker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Roker. That's Roker's ad lib, actually. Yeah, what, really? the what? what the what? Yeah. What the what? <laughs> this scene in 3D is almost crazily distracting <laughs> with that. It becomes that, a scene about the licorice robe. The licorice robe is so in your face. We were like, we want it more and more in your face. And then we saw it, we're like, uh oh. Maybe we overdid it there a little bit. I still don't know how this sequence plays because when we played it back for press in New York a week ago, the the trivia cards that come on before, before the, the movie were on like an automatic timer and they popped on in the middle of the press screening for about 30 seconds. While Chris I love that the one, that one chicken is really going at it for his chicken crotch there. Oh, uh, yeah, so it was, yeah, like those weird, like, uh, uh, you know, oh, like, trivia what, questions. Yeah. Robert Williams says the comedy movie. is hard. Oh, uh, yeah. Here's Sandra Bullock in the proposal. It's yeah. literally all throughout this sequence. They're like <laughs> yeah. these weird yeah. factoids <laughs> superimposed. What Martin Lawrence movie is he united? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Making uh, We made Anna do stuff with her mouth full. We made her do a whole scene uh, where she's got this horrible allergy. Uh, we made her say things like the Jai Yuguin Pass in Eastern China and all these crazy complicated the mill, designs. Yeah. We, really, we really had her do some crazy stuff in this movie. <laughs> I remember that. that. You we had to do like 400 what, times. No, but I remember you guys gave me like a full on line <laughs> reading for yes. that, and it was really funny. When you, I remember Chris doing the line reading, and I started laughing really hard. I was like, oh, that's what you were going for. <laughs> and then sometimes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the, what 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 the action verb is to give you yeah. to elicit that. I hope that was the only line we gave you. The no, it was not. not. <laughs> now this no. crazy <laughs> belly of the beast scene, I'm still not quite sure what the we never had quite terms like the tonsil and the flowering base. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We did not know the what. um extruded plastic dingus. Yes. <laughs> And now we get to have uh, Steve's great payoff. Um, these gummy bears, the way that they refract the light is super awesome. Jeez, here comes this big hero moment. Okay. That was, uh, they went to town. We like, make that as trippy as possible. <laughs> like something in the film needed to be trippier. This is also, I, I should say that there's a lot of lens flares, especially in this uh, last third of the film, and it's no coincidence that uh, the Star Trek reboot that J.J. Abrams did had just come out 
and we thought it was so funny how many lens flares were in it. Yeah, Steve just ripped the heart out of that yellow gummy bear right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this scene was animated by Dave Harden, a really funny animator, him uh, trying to fly. We thought that was hilarious. We, it was his idea. <laughs> Those the, that makes it look like the uh, gummy bears are made of magic. <laughs> yes, the sparkles. Yeah, 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 they're made of magic. And so even in the in the face of danger, he's still humming his own theme song. I love how scary uh, the, everybody made this the the dingus sound. <laughs> Where did he go? Oh. <laughs> but I just love, like, I love, like, that, like, that, that machine sounds so cool, and then the cartoon noise sounds so dorky. I love that those are in the same movie. I, I, I like that, the thing you guys came up with where he lists the things that he's doing. <laughs> He's like narrating himself. Yeah. Sorry, old friend. <laughs> this is <laughs> kitchen's closed. The kitchen's closed, and then he shoves the thing into the welcome to moose port. <laughs> that was hopefully one of the very few actual pop culture references and I wouldn't even call it a pop culture reference because that, that movie was, was like was that 10, 12 years ago already that's like an old like writer's room thing right like somebody would say ah oh, welcome to Mooseport yeah like somebody had a bit <laughs> where that, that was their catchphrase <laughs> well, you know how it is here welcome to Mooseport it's one of those days there was a bunch of that, like, all those oh, food words. This oh. is uh, the callback to when he said, When all seemed lost, I stared at defeat and found hope. Yeah. And at one point, we called that back, and it was a big groaner because he was staring at his feet. And defeat. And the, uh, we, it lo was, we loved we it. Loved we thought it. it was so funny. And then it, when we finally saw it there, it just took away from the... Uh, yeah, it's story. funny. You, you want to like put as many jokes in a lot of times, and you realize like you actually do get caught up in you the feel... emotion of the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it just messes it and up. You're like, well, that's a real groaner. Now is Flint dead? You guys? I hope. I sure hope not. This explosion was worked on for many, many, many weeks by <laughs> I a love team. The, of the request from us is like, can you make a um, rainbow explosion? <laughs> Um, and they, they did, did. <laughs> and they really did. I love this part of Mark's score. The, the TV's the dancing TV's and happiness. <laughs> yeah. He's very excited. He's not going to die. And then I love how it's undercut by the worst landing like the, in the whole world. Hey, Manny's a great pilot. Yeah, I mean, considering the, the factors, runway is a great they, they came back intact, yeah. Um, how good a Brent got out of that do. door is not physically possible. Yeah. Um, you, you buy you, it. You buy it. <laughs> you know, this, they'll, they'll always buy stuff at the end of the movie. This is a great scene where you can see how the animators were able to give Tim a lot of expressiveness without having to see his eyes. I'm sorry. Oh. Still makes me a little sad, you guys. That's an issue. It'd be crazy if it just went from here to like directed by Chris. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like Chris, Chris Miller, Chris Miller. Jam it on there. Yeah. Wow, it was great. Uh, you know, he gave up himself for the cause, and it was really noble of him. It was like the ending yeah. of a point. Yeah, it was just like that. When we saw this. Uh, in a recent screening, there was a little girl sitting in front of him going, It's the Rapids! Aww. I thought was pretty cute. Kevin He's Freeman smoking. Uh, was the guy who animated all of those birds. Oh, and like also dude. did this, the shot where all of the chickens were on the, the ceiling. Uh, he was like, you have to do a lot of birds all the time. I love that you don't recognize that guy. 
I think that's your ad lib. You guys. <laughs> this name's Batui. This uh, this came from John uh, John Norton's storyboard. Yes, where it was all, we realized there was a lot of names. We realized in the there thing. was a lot of names, and instead of taking some of the names out, we just decided to put a lot more in. Uh, he did an, did an awesome job with it. Oh, for crying out loud! This moment was a great uh, a great payoff, and I can't remember where I've, it came from. For the my idea life, I can't remember of yeah. putting the monkey thought but, translator but on it, the dad. It was there for a while. It was there yeah. from when I came on. I remember that was the end. I'm going to attribute it to Rob for that the purposes fair. of this DVD. But it was, it was it was like a the perfect fit for you know getting the guy who can't express himself to express himself and I think it's pretty funny and touching at the same time which is really hard to do. Now uh, look when I take this thing off and you hear me make a. Fish. I like the couple over his, yeah. <laughs> his screen like left shoulder. Super yeah. touched by it. I think there's a the couple that starts. Making out like a French couple. <laughs> oh, that's, when, that's when Flint and Sam start getting oh, together. Later. There's a guy who goes, ah, oh, Did more. you see that the macaroni oh, yes. guy's looking the wrong way? Oh, yeah. Throughout the movie, the macaroni guy is always facing backwards. You can see him in like the corners of shots and stuff like that. So, he's facing the wrong way. But... We should talk about this kiss for one second. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, in, in, there was the, uh, we, in the original version of this kiss, uh, Flint's kissing style was to stick his tongue out very very small out of that balloon shape and when we tested it moms freaked out so much yeah. that we were depicting tongue kissing that we had to go with this way i mean i thought they were going to burn the theater down we took it out and uh and then and then they loved it hey these titles are based on i love lucy <laughs> <laughs> naturally of course but this was not well thought out. Our joke here was that he would say, this was not well thought out, and then written in Rick and to us. the Lord and Christ. <laughs> 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 I don't think anybody ever gets that bit. No, um, but I laugh at it. This whole uh, credit thing was designed Pam! by... Pam! Um, That's our producer, Pam Marsden, Marsden who uh, kept, kept the ship is afloat. the most level-headed person I've ever met in my life. And still Woo! manages to be really fun. Judy and Ron. Judy yeah. and Ron obviously were the super obviously, inspiration. Yeah. Could not have been more gracious about uh, allowing us to uh, have free reign uh, with their baby. And uh, they couldn't love the movie more, and and uh, they couldn't be nicer people. Yeah, this whole sequence was designed by Justin Thompson and Paul Rudish, and. They did an amazing job making it uh, mm -hmm. fun and cartoony. Executed by the good folks at Duck Studios. Mm -hmm. We uh, um, originally had this to the song Xanadu by ELO. From the Fil movie of the, the same name. The non-hit film Xanadu. I am a not very closeted ELO fan. But when we were trying to get the yeah, rights to good. that song, yeah, uh, that was fantastic. We we're trying to get the rights to that song, and nobody wanted to take credit for the rights. Yeah, to that it's song. like we no one will like claim to it. Like Universal claims they don't own it. The the music label claims they don't own it. Like everyone's so embarrassed by it. I don't think they should be. I think it's kind of a great song. Um, and but then, at some point, it was decided that you know, we should write something original. And um, Miranda Cosgrove, TV's iCarly. Uh, was gracious oh, wow. enough to She's record this. Oh, ghost in the thing. Yeah, I love that thing. And then there's a question mark wipe. It's like, like what the heck was that? <laughs> yeah. Lydia and Chris were Woo! real. Mark Mother's Bob, that is yeah. a superstars putting that the whole is, thing together. That is huge. God, he's Our an absolute Bob. hero of ours. Yeah, Mark Mother's Bob. God. Yeah. Yep. Yes. That choice alone should expose us for the nerds that we Rob are. Rob Rita, who, who did a lot of the effects on Independence Day, who was our original effects supervisor, was uh, a super genius. I love that London doesn't get changed, cheered up. Cheered up at all. <laughs> Even in the, in the earlier part, all the skies go blue except for London that goes gray. <laughs> Kerry Yost, who designed all the characters we worked with on Clone High, and he was a really, really talented guy. And he had a whole team of great people. Dave Moorhead, who uh, helped us with our, uh, with our awesome camera angles and all the crazy whooshes and swoops that we tried to do. 
Mm. I cannot stress enough the contribution of the animation team and, and the lighting team and, and, and all I mean, of the everybody incredible who technicians. This movie yeah, was, just did an amazing job. This uh, this credit roll was also designed by Justin. It'd be sort of Flint, Flint's Labby and it's extra cool in, in Trace Dimensiones. That's Spanish uh, for 3D. <laughs> Chris is, knows a lot of sure. languages. Listen, I, I'm very worldly, <laughs> you guys. He knows tons. He's very yeah, smart. I don't. Get out of here. You yes. guys. Wow, this is... Uh, but yeah, that's the thing. It's like you watch one of these movies and it's like so many people work on these animals. Yeah. <laughs> it's 500 <laughs> it's people. It's ridiculous. Yes. You watch like the, I mean, the, you know, the credit sequences right. in these movies alone are... Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why we wanted it to say a film by a lot of people because, you know, this wasn't like Buffalo 66 or our student <laughs> films where we, like, edited yeah. and did all of our own yeah, sound it's not and everything. Or whatever. Yeah, it's exactly. not Lars von Trier. This movie. is, like, a lot of people, a lot of artists and filmmakers contributed a lot of, a lot of thought and passion into this thing. And the whole process is so collaborative, and if you don't embrace that, uh, you drive yourself crazy. Um, so it really was a, a huge team effort. Mm. Marvin and Moon and the modeling team were able to take these drawings that Carrie and Justin and other people did and make them just as cartoony and crazy. And there were no right angles in the movie and there were no perfectly straight lines and there were no perfectly round circles. In the, the, the biggest compliment to them is that, that Chris Riccardi, who designed a lot of the vehicles in the movie, came in and, and a year after he did all the designs and said, uh, I can't believe it looks like my drawing. That's never happened in my whole it looks career. Exactly the way I drew it. They they were really wow, really. What amazing. is character pipe pipeline? What is that? Um, that is the this thing that we're looking at. <laughs> that thing that we're looking at. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That is Justin's depiction of the character pipeline in the back there. No, huh. there's just so many. Like that's the thing. You're, of the you're, infrastructure of getting the 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 characters into the set and and modeled and rigged and all that type of stuff that, yeah that's the thing that blew my mind when i went into the offices that i went in i saw all these people working all these graphs everywhere all this stuff that was so was much insane work and then you were like oh well this is the one wing we have there's like <laughs> three more and you go in it's like you know three other huge areas just like that with just people at their computers just <laughs> They're and, working and there's really, really hard. Insane. And there's a machine room that yes. runs the length of the building. It's a city block long that is like <laughs> just all servers, servers. Worrying, trying to process all this, this movie. Stuff. This music so, that you're hearing is like the is like the suite of the score from Mark uh, Mother's Ba. Yeah, Andy, our music editor, cut this, and uh, it's actually a beautiful suite, I think. It really shows off Mark's score in a great way. I will say personally, thank you guys for uh, including me on in this. Oh my god, this thank is you like for doing this. Thing, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, for the, you know, my first kind of, you know, big animated thing like this, I'm, I'm, I feel very, very lucky. Well, we really, really lucky <laughs> to have you around, and, and uh, you really did a great job and really made the character uh, funny and lovable. So, oh, thanks, guys. Let's do it again. Yeah, oh, let's do times. it again. Um, awesome. Well, thank you, thank everybody, for, for watching uh, and making it through this whole commentary. I'm really impressed with you at home or wherever you're watching this. Yeah. Way to go. And, um,. I don't know. Go uh, watch the deleted scenes now. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, recommend those. Those are cool. Yeah. Um, admire the the beautiful menus. Yeah. That yeah. were created for it. Buy some more Sony products. Yeah. yeah buy some Sony products. Yeah. If uh, and, it's in another uh, language, listen to it in that language. Maybe yeah. learn a new language. It's a good way to go. Be cooler people. Yeah. Branch out, guys. <laughs> Branch out. <laughs> Show them your stuff, kid. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.